episode three of Gold Mafia. We love the gangster lifestyle. You live by the gun, you die by the gun. The biggest challenge Zimbabwe now faces is the Gold Mafia. Al Jazeera's investigative unit infiltrates the rival gangs that control Africa's gold. As long as you grease the wheels in Africa, there's no issue. Smuggling. That's all it is, smuggling. Hello, Abu Siafo. But Sunvest medicated powder. Now, how are you from? Hey, I say when I'm in the swamps, when you're in the sea, when you're going out to talk, I'm going to call. I'm going to call. Hey, Jimmy. It's what now? I'm going to say. A crow. What? It's a kakarere. A yam. A crow. A juni pebe ya boso. A nuniye. Sunvest medicated ointment. A bebwa. Ma posu, ma posu. Ni huna mina tutu me. Ni huwe ni. Onya, men it's not how man for Namia and who in the mercy. What post what post to complain in a head so bitcher? Potter sun best hair bar bar. You're from a mama sun best. Sun best products. A dutchum. Obenya sun best products. Our pharmacies. Any hair bar shops in the name. A two form friend 0554 907 393. FD. I did get the encryption. Episode 3 of Gold Mafia. We love the gangster lifestyle. You live by the gun, you die by the gun. The biggest challenge Zimbabwe now faces is the Gold Mafia. Al Jazeera's investigative yeah. unit infiltrates the rival yeah. gangs that control Africa's gold. As long as you grease the wheels in Africa, there's no issue. Smuggling. That's all it is, smuggling. All the pepper chains, it's not like somebody can. Christian. Former members of the Gold Mafia speak exclusively to the I unit. The Gold Mafia is bigger than the government, bigger than any of the authorities. What do you think is going to happen? They kill you, don't they? Exactly. Undercover journalists pose as gangsters who want to launder more than 100 million US dollars. It's blood money. The yeah. funds are substantial. The I unit obtains thousands of confidential documents that expose how organized crime groups use gold to launder money. You sold it to a refinery and the money got paid in the bank account. So it's very okay. clean that way. Once it's refined, it's practically brand new gold. A good washing machine, right? In this episode, a gold mafia in Dubai helps the team launder money. We make you a company in Gold Tower. We then we open you an account here. Yeah. You know, we have influence with the funds. Dubai is the most common denominator across the board where everybody wants funds. They've set themselves up for being the middle of the gold trade, lax laws and no enforcement. It all comes out of Dubai. All Dubai, 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 Dubai. Now we are at Jumeirah Lake Towers, called GLT Free Zone. The undercover team is in Dubai to visit a gold mafia boss. He wants to show them the corporate structure of his money laundering operation. This is gold, silver, protein, yeah. charts. So now we are going to gold. Gold. You need a representative office in the gold tower. The towers are for companies that trade in precious metals. Everything to do with silver is this. Platinum is this. Kamlesh Patney is a notorious gold dealer. He goes by the alias Brother Pool. He says there are benefits to operating out of gold tower. It's not oh, security is higher. Oh. There's a lot of gold in this building. 
maybe three times, four times. No, no. And this precious bullion. If this is yours? Yes. Yeah. Precious. Patney offers to store gold bought using dirty money at one of his trading companies. So this is where our stuff will be? Yes. Your storage can be here, you can keep the... Yeah. This is the gold. gold. Johnny is an undercover reporter posing as a black market money trader. The Hawala man, who sends money around the world without legal checks. So you can keep a lot of gold in here. So you can put like, like I think 400 kilos on the door. We, we can have somebody employed it and uh, to be working here. Mr. Stanley leads the I unit's undercover team. He plays a gangster who needs to wash over $100 million in dirty cash from Hong Kong. The keys are with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Stanley's money will be safe in Dubai. All the agent is the police security. Yeah. Each and every office, each and every corridor, each and every room, each and every street is fully equipped with the cameras. Patney takes Mr. Stanley to another of his companies at the Gold Souk in old Dubai. Fiza Gold and Bullion. Patney shows us the day's earnings. Every day, 10 million, 5 million. So this is the local dirham. How much is the dirham? This is around 150,000. The gold souk attracts international customers. People from China, they will be safe. This market is yeah. yeah, That's the certification, it's one. It's one kilo. Yeah. Yeah. Patney exports gold from Zimbabwe through his company Susan General Trading. The Zimbabwean government pays him an incentive to sell the gold overseas. Patney's companies in Dubai, like Golden Luxury and Fiza, buy the gold from his companies in Zimbabwe. So this is Zimbabwe, yeah. and you will find it here. Zimbabwe is not yet purified. He owns both the exporter and the importer. It's designed this way to enable him to launder money. The scheme to wash Mr. Stanley's cash would involve Patney receiving the dirty money plus a 10% commission. Patney will sell the gold he imports from Zimbabwe and pay the proceeds into a Dubai bank account set up for Mr. Stanley. You collect the money, yes. the cash from Hong Kong, yes. bring it to Dubai. Yes. From Dubai, you take it to Harare. Yes. Mr. Stanley's dirty money, in the form of US dollars cash, will be sent to Zimbabwe. Arriving in Harare, it will be declared as the proceeds of gold exported by Patney's company, Susan General Trading. We see that form and declaration. It's in Zimbabwe. Because Zimbabwe is all cash by. It will be declared clean in Zimbabwe, and Mr. Stanley will have clean money in a Dubai bank account. Everything will appear legal. All the paper chains legitimate. Yeah. It's not like uh, somebody can question anything. Like the gold from Zimbabwe will be sent to a Dubai refinery to be melted down again. The bars will be stamped with the refiner's hallmark. And the gold becomes a product of Dubai. This makes the gold easier to sell because it will no longer be associated with Zimbabwe and its sanctioned leaders. In Zimbabwe, a small elite controls basically all natural resources, including gold. So the gold needs to be washed. Dubai has a, a long-standing role receiving gold of a dubious background, DRC Sudan. 
and now they're turning towards um, Zimbabwe. We send 50 kilo, 100 kilo now to, to this refinery. Then they give us this. And these are now called investment. Gold that comes to refiners, once it's refined, it's practically a brand new gold. This one is in Switzerland and London also. The Dubai gold would, for instance, be exported either to London or to Switzerland because you want to stamp Swiss gold on it. Then, of course, every bank in the world will buy it. Not only is Stanley's dirty money cleaned, so is the gold sourced in Zimbabwe. That is what I call gold laundering. One launders the gold by adding a stamp of approval of a country that makes it marketable. The undercover team also deals with representatives of the Zimbabwean government. Previously on Gold Mafia, an ambassador offers to smuggle over a billion dollars in dirty cash into Zimbabwe under diplomatic cover. I'm just again glad to diplomat in the country. Right now, I can put some back like this with 1.2 billion and put a red tape written diplomat. That's it. You. Nobody can touch you. Nobody can touch you. Ubert Angel is Zimbabwe's ambassador at large to Europe and the Americas. He's also a self proclaimed prophet. I'm very sharp in the prophetic. You don't, you don't confuse me when it comes to the prophetic. No, I walk there, I live there, I talk there, I sleep there. I'm a major me. I know me. Trust me, when it comes to the prophetic, I eat prophecy. Guess what happens? Angel claims he announced beforehand the result of an African Cup of Nations final. The underdogs will be the winners. You will be so surprised. Do we have Senegal? Oh, we have one reason. Brother, Senna, rejoice. About nine hours after the prophetic decree went forth, Senegal surprised everyone by winning the final for the first time ever. For history, for Senegal! One of the men organizing Mr. Stanley's money laundering also assists Angel at his church. Did you know I was a singer too? No. No. No, you didn't say you were a singer. You didn't say you were a singer. Check me out. Ricky Doolan is from the northeast of England. He's related to Ambassador Angel through marriage. He's known as Pastor Ricky. I love to, to minister. I love to minister. It's nice. Better than singing in a club or a nightclub or entertainment. It's different. Everything perfect. Perfect, perfect. We're going to show you something. Yeah. Good. Johnny presents Doolan with a fake proposal for a $1.2 billion casino resort. It would be constructed overlooking Victoria Falls, one of the seven wonders of the natural world. Wow. This is nice. Great Zimbabwe integrated casino. You want to call it Great Zimbabwe? The, the actual place. You want to build this? Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. you think we can? Of course. Why? Do we have space? There's a lot of space. 
So these things are the uh, hotels. This is the casino. Doolan believes the casino would please Zimbabwe's president, Emerson Manangagwa. A meeting with the president is being arranged for the undercover team. This goes perfectly in line with the vision of the number one. We want it to be a tourist destination. Yeah. Yes. It's a tourist attraction. Big one. This one you are engaging with high-end people. Doolan has a vision for the future guests of this fictitious casino. Go on the safari, enjoy the wildlife. We've also got land um, for hunting. A lot of high-end people like hunting. He thinks he could sell them gold as well. We'll facilitate the person investing in gold while they're there. So it's a leisure trip, it's a business trip, it's everything they want. Dubai started exactly like this. Somebody with money saying, oh, there's an opportunity here. Let's build a few buildings and look at the buy now. Yeah. I honestly believe in my heart of hearts, Zimbabwe can become like the buy. Dubai is one of the biggest gold hubs in the world. 20 to 25% of the world's gold goes through Dubai. It's over a $70 billion industry. Amjad Rehan worked in Dubai for the global accounting firm Ernst & Young. In 2013, he audited the UAE's largest gold refineries. Rehan's audit of Kaluti and another large Dubai refinery, Al Etihad Gold, is scathing. The biggest two refiners who hand in about 80% of the refining market share, they are rated non-compliant, high risk, dealing with sanctioned countries or conflict gold. The refinery can produce 1,000 kilograms of 999.9% .9 gold per day. Kaluti is the biggest with around 50% of the refining market share, and in fact, one of the biggest globally. So the team started doing their audit, interviewing people uh, and doing site visits. And they started discovering some shocking, disturbing violations. Hello, Abu Siafo. But Sunvest medicated powder. Now, how are you from? Hey, I say when I'm in Swans, when yes, it's still never good enough to talk. I'm a cop, I'm a hot soul. Oh, don't tell me. It's what's now I'm a way, I say. A crop. I don't. Saka Kareri, a yam, a crop, a juniper de abosso, a nun ye. Sunvest medicated ointment, a bab wow. My possum, my possum, you know, you know, to tell me. You win. Onya, men na ho ma ho na me a ehu wani ma ase. Wa poso wa poso complain nyina. Ed so betwa. Koto sand best herbal balm. Ye wani ma papa. Ye from me mama sand best. Sand best products. Ed twem. We be your sand best products. I was pharmacy. Any herbal shops in there. Et to phone friend 0554 907393. FD. I did get the encryption to your we found that Kaluti was doing over 5.2 billion US dollars in cash, in cash, in one year. Uh, that represents about 40% of Kaluti's business done in cash. When you think about 5.2 billion, you're talking about 100 million a week. That's a huge number. And to be done in cash, that raises a lot of suspicions. We concluded that Kaluti's due diligence management system is a huge failure. I mean, it's not functioning effectively. Ernst & Young accepted Rehan's findings, but ordered him to work with the Dubai authorities. To my shock, instead of 
supporting me and backing me up. They instructed me to uh, help the Dubai regulator and the Dubai refiners. Rehan refused to go along with the plan and resigned. I felt it's unsafe for me to challenge the decisions made and to actually do my job properly. Whilst the regulator, the refiner and EY, all of them are uh, not supportive of what I say. I would be at odds with the with very powerful people and entities in Dubai and I would have been at a great risk. Rehan brought a claim in a London court against EY, which is headquartered in Britain. The judge ruled the auditors had tried to sweep under the rug the findings of Kaluti's money laundering. EY also bowed to pressure from the Dubai authorities. Ernst Young did not debate our findings. They couldn't. We had objective evidence. We had strong documentary evidence. And they couldn't, you know, argue with us about our findings. EY paid Rehan $11 million in damages. Dubai authorities removed Kaluti from their list of approved refineries. The company rebranded and is now named MTM and O. Having access to refineries is central to the Mafia's ability to launder money through gold. Then it has a certificate and then the money is washed and cleaned and is turned into a legitimate asset. Patney uses four refineries in Dubai. <laughs> the list includes two that failed Rehan's audit. MTMNO, formerly Kaluti, and Al Etihad. The gold refiners are the most important point in the gold supply chain. Without the refiner doing a good job ensuring that they scrutinized the supply chain and they covered the risks in the supply chain, it's so difficult for those after the refiner to do that job. The refiner's job is critical in ensuring that the gold before refining is clean. A decade after Rehan's audit, the I unit discovers a continued lack of concern in Dubai about the origin of gold. I just fly there in the retail next morning because I just drop it in there. There's no problem. Custom is waiting for me. Alec Yassini is part of a network of private couriers who smuggle cash and gold in and out of Dubai. He thinks he's being interviewed for a job working for Mr. Stanley. He describes his skills. What do you mean? So you bring moving things in and out from Dubai, metal, gold, diamonds, and stuff like that. We pay a certain amount of what? Hundred, hundred and twenty dollars for whatever package you have, even if any amount, or even ten kg, two kg, whatever, just pay hundred and twenty. Custom, in your He also moves large amounts of cash. Uh, a million is no problem, but if it's more than two, three, then I have to make a letter from that side, so they don't give me a hassle. Mm -hmm. I know how to deal with that. Oh, yeah. Yassini forges paperwork himself. I do the papers. If you don't have the license, I know how to do it. When I get into Dubai, straight to the customs, uh, I've got the papers, I fill in the forms. There's no risk at all. Well, I'm not surprised to hear that. There's very little scrutiny in, in, in Dubai. The rules are very relaxed. There aren't many checks done to verify the origin of gold. There's no risk at all. The audits we completed confirm what uh, this man you interviewed has said, that 
Dubai is a hub for dirty gold. Gold used in money laundering or gold fueling conflict. Dirty gold, in my opinion, has very easy access to, to Dubai. Rehan still has the data provided by Kaluti as part of its audit. We asked him to search Kaluti's list of suppliers for companies linked to the gold mafia. I'm just looking at the those who did humongous amounts of cash with Kaluti, and I see Goldrest is here. Goldrest Resources had a subsidiary in the UAE. Its director was Alistair Mathias. He's designing a laundromat for Mr. Stanley's dirty cash. He's a financial architect for corrupt politicians. They've done over 16 million US dollars in cash with Kaluti. So he's a relatively substantial supplier of, of Kaluti. Matthias works with another gold mafia boss, Ewan McMillan. <laughs> Thank you for coming. McMillan regularly moves gold in and out of Dubai. <laughs> you just send the guy first class and he gets 50 kgs luggage. It all comes out of Dubai. It's all Dubai, 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 Dubai. McMillan is bidding to launder Mr. Stanley's $100 million. He's a Zimbabwean smuggler, known as Mr. Gold. So you'll have to set up a company in the bank. You're going to help him. That's going to be the finance or trading company. So you're, you're going to tell the bank that we're going to be trading in commodities or gold. So that's where the money will come to that account all the time. Use one of the local banks. The United Arab Emirates has free zones to encourage international trade. Just set up a company in one of the free zones. I'll tell you which ones also. The one I use, I pay about $10,000 every year. Depending on the size of your office, you get minimum three visas, five visas, 10 visas, depending how many you want. That's the easiest. It's a flight with two million US dollars in a suitcase. Land in Dubai, walk in there and say, I want to declare it. And say, right, they charge me 20 US dollars equivalent. And they won't check, right? They won't check company name. They don't bother. Miss Sin is another undercover reporter. She's posing as Mr. Stanley's financial advisor. I used to fly from Zambia 50 kgs of gold and two and a half million US dollars cash. Arrive, put the gold in, sign that up, take the cash, cash money, pay 20, pay 20, it was like 20, 20 US dollars duty. It's a paperwork. It's, it's, a, it's what they charge you to do the paperwork. Pay $20 for the the documentation. Yeah. Take the money, you go straight to the Bureau Exchange, they count the two and a half million, and they transfer it to your bank account. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Matthias attempts a due diligence check on Mr. Stanley. But the money is not related to drugs or bombs or emissions, right? Do you need to know source? No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> it's not drugs or arms and ammunition or terrorism related, right? Not this treatment, no. Then, OK. Uh, probably commissions, I'm guessing. In the language of money laundering, commissions means bribes. And no, we don't want to know source of funds. We just <laughs> want to make sure he's not Pablo Escobar from Hong Kong. <laughs> you got shot. The guy reverses and follows the car. I think just shot down the road. They showed me all the bullets. He's still got one in his back. Nine shots are fired. It missed his neck by millimetres. Went through and out. Fun. No, nothing. No death. I was with him this morning. The target is Simon Rudland, one of Zimbabwe's richest men. He runs a money laundering operation through his company, Goldleaf Tobacco. They call him the boss. You have no idea the money this guy has. 
Goldleaf is one of Southern Africa's largest cigarette producers. Since I didn't realize that I'd made so many people angry. <laughs> Crazy. So what's happening? He posted 10 million for information. Rand. That's a million dollars. Just throw it out there. You don't have a billion dollars in your bank account and can't fight back. Previously on Gold Mafia, Rudland makes a fortune from illicit cigarettes. He sells them on the black market in South Africa without paying taxes. It's money he needs to launder. He has a very big problem. He's an illicit cigarette trader. He's the biggest in South Africa. The illicit cigarette trade earns rand cash, so he gets a ginormous amount of rand cash. How does he legitimize it? An I-Unit surveillance operation follows couriers working for Rudland. They carry gold to Dubai. It belongs to the Zimbabwean government. The same flight they left with, that's the same flight that they come back with. EK713, when it's leaving Dubai, someone is with serious buyers in, in Dubai already. The couriers exchange gold for cash and take the next flight back to Harare. The buyer in Dubai is all in global trading. Documents obtained by the I unit reveal Orlean receives the profits of illegal cigarette sales, worth millions of dollars. Orlean uses this money to buy gold from Zimbabwe's central bank. Orlean is the gold leaf mafia's hub in Dubai. While Simon Rudland controls the funds, documents name H.J. or Howie Baker as a director of Orlean. Simon brought everything to the table along with Howie. Howie was the glue keeping everyone together. Daoud Khan was once a part of the money laundering operation. He's speaking to the I unit from a safe house. Simon and Howie are basically They've got their hand on almost every transaction. In October 2018, Prodigy Trading, Baker's Hong Kong company, buys shares in a Dubai-based gold trader, Empress Bullion. The following month, Rudland's couriers deliver Zimbabwean gold to Empress. Gold export certificates from the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe legitimize the money laundering operation. You've got Howie, Simon, that is conducting certain uh, conversations in Zimbabwe with government officials, looking at it, ensuring the support of government structures, Reserve Bank structures, and custom structures within, within Zimbabwe. Simon Rudland dictates to the Zimbabwean government to a certain extent on what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. Empress is a favoured trading partner for gold smuggler Alec Yassini. I've been buying from them for some time. He shows the undercover team invoices for gold sales. This is the Empress. Huh? <laughs> That's Empress again. There's another one also, this is um, 9 million. It's Empress, I think, is, is the best. Howie Baker is a director of both Empress and Orlean. His partner at Orlean is Andres Gravenstein, who's been convicted for illegal gold dealing. Gravenstein and Baker were also partners in a South African precious metals company, the Gold Kid Trading. Gold Kid operated from offices in a residential suburb of Johannesburg. You've got a very casual or tranquil working space. Andres, Howie, and few occasions Simon Watson. 
in these discussions, it was basically now how to move funds out utilizing gold. You've got Simon on the top. You've got Howie as the middle man between everyone, almost as the COO of the Mafia. And you've got then Andres, who's maybe chief sales officer. Daud Khan's brother, Mohammed, then joins the operation. And you've got Mohammed, who's the chief financial officer for this Mafia. That's how, when they are all sitting around the table, they believe themselves to be in that hierarchy. However, outside that room, you've got a Simon that still believes he is top dog. You've got Howie that believes I'm top dog. And you've got Mohammed who believes without him, no one could be who they are. He is the master. Mohammed believes he's the God amongst them. There is no other way to put it, and I'm saying God because he believes he can create or break these individuals. He controlled their finances. So he believed he was key in every aspect. Mohammed Khan is one of South Africa's most prolific money launderers. He has a street name. Of course I know Mo Dollars. I was married to him. <laughs> Wada Latif enjoyed an opulent lifestyle. He used to give me diamonds in front of people. I get black diamonds. I just get whatever I want. That was my power. Latif traveled with her husband on regular trips to Dubai. I used to stay at the Burj Al Arab. I used to stay at Jumeirah Madinat. So I had personal chefs running around me the whole day, every day. Mo Dollars launders money here. Money gets dropped off, and then he requests the new dollars. Brand new crispy dollars. I only use new dollars. Cash. So gold we buy cash, bags, Everything, shoes, we buy cash. So there's no trail. When I go to Dubai Mall, I have gold trolleys behind me. The people in Louis Vuitton in Dubai, they know me by name. What if I see? What if I like? I buy. Only bags and shoes and gold and... <laughs> I just buy and buy and buy. It was just mad, mad. A short drive from the mall where Latif shops is Jumeirah Lake Towers, Dubai's commodities trading hub. Gold Tower is the address for Orlean Global Trading, the company at the center of Rudland's money laundering scheme. It's in the same tower as Precious Bullion, where Mr. Stanley visited Kamalesh Patney and was told to set up a company to launder money. The I unit obtains documents that show the Goldleaf Mafia uses Orlean in another money laundering scheme. The Gold Kid Trading enters an agreement to buy gold from Orlean. It's an order from a client from outside South Africa. Gold Kid employs Mo Dollar's asset management company, PKSA, to loan it money to finance the gold buying. This allows PKSA to send payments abroad. It appears to be a normal business relationship between two gold trading companies. That looks like a legitimate contract and a process, banking transactions, but ultimately, they're washing the money through a legally binding contract that's put on a piece of paper. They're legitimizing the money on paper. They're moving the money amongst themselves. You've got gold kids who's Mohammed, Howie, Simon, Andres, creating a paper trail through a contract with a company in Dubai, which is Olyan. Olyan is Howie, Mohammed.
Hello, Abusia for but sun best medicated powder. Now, hold your form. Hey, I say, when I'm in swans, one yes, it's you. Never good now to talk about poor Ama Watson. Oh, don't you mean it's what's now Ama Why I say a crow. I don't say a career, a yum, a crow, a juniper, the abosso, and only ye sun best medicated ointment. A bab wow. My possum, my possum, me who know me not to tune me. Who win? Onya, man, it's not how man who na miya enu we ni masi. What possible, what possible complaining na? Add so becha. Potter sun best hair bar balm. Ye from me mama sun best. Sun best products. Add to chum. We be nya sun best products. I wa pharmacies. Any hair bar shops ni na. Add to phone friend zero five five four nine zero seven three nine three. FDA. I did jadi enkra tuya yatu. Med Simon. And even Andres, all benefiting from the incomes generated. Oh, that's very um, suspicious. Uh, if you have the same person on, on both sides of a transaction, it is highly likely that it is a fake transaction, that it doesn't make economic sense. What you're talking about is trade based money laundering. I um, mean, that is the hot topic of today. Trade-based money laundering costs countries millions of dollars every year in tax revenues, but the most concerning part of it is, of course, the fact that it's used to move dirty money and to legitimize illegal proceeds from criminal activity. Spirit Embassy, attention! Yes, sir. We shall win souls everywhere! Hubert Angel is Zimbabwe's presidential envoy. He addresses international audiences on bringing foreign investment to Zimbabwe free from corruption. People to people diplomacy is increasingly viewed as an antidote to moral and political cannibalism as it enables individuals to trust in each other to facilitate, manage, and drive investments with little or no corruption or it demands for bribes. That guy doesn't take bribes. Mm. Oh no, no, he won't. There's a big difference in appreciating somebody <laughs> and bribing. You know, at this level, people don't bribe nobody. You, you get my point? No, no. Yeah, people do bribe, bribe. So there is somebody saying, uh, thank you for everything that you are doing for us, and da, 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 da. big difference. Mm. Because he is just not that kind of a person. Mm. Angel and his sidekick, Ricky Doolan, have asked undercover reporters to pay $200,000 in exchange for a meeting with President Manangagwa. He's election, I think they're spending $240 million US dollars. Yeah. And that's his money. It's not somebody else, it's not the party, it's his money. So when somebody's got that money to spend on... Yeah. Yeah. You, you give him one million, it's like a slip in the face. Mm -hmm. Unless you say, it's just to thank you. The meeting with Manangagwa will secure a deal to launder over a billion dollars of dirty cash. Doolan tells Mr. Stanley what to expect. Obviously, once we get the ball rolling, there'll be points in times along the way where people will need to be greased. Ministers, different guys, bum bum. But in in a country like what we're talking about, and all across Africa actually, it's the only way to get things done smoothly. It won't be too painful. It will just be a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. It will, we'll tackle them as we go along. It won't stop the project. Once it's rolling, it's rolling. Yeah. Once we've made a promise to the, to the president, we have to execute. Mm -hmm. One way or another, you know. Yeah. It's now just a case of speed and efficiency because we need it to move fast. Mr. Stanley is told that Angel needs to be paid too. Spending over backwards. He's calling the president, he's talking to the president. He's arranged the meeting for you already. Ambassador's not being appreciated. Alistair Mathias controls companies in Switzerland, as well as Dubai and across Africa. They provide cover for money laundering. I do it here more for track record because 
yes. have an existing business here, then source of funds so is not a problem. So that's why I have setups everywhere. Whatever is like gray area, I take it to Dubai. Now the Ghana was the biggest at one point. So I was doing one ton, one and a half ton every month. So about 40 to 60 million dollars every month. Wow. I was exporting out the Ghana. Matthias is preparing a financial structure to launder Mr. Stanley's money. He tells undercover reporter Miss Sin to be careful with her language. We have all the money that we need to clean and um and didn't say that word. She just says money you need to move. <laughs> uh, sorry. You should never say I need to clean all the time. You don't say this here, no. Say you need to move it from here to there. That's better that way. <laughs> to avoid detection, Matthias controls gold supply chains by owning companies that he places in other people's names. If I have a chain, mm -hmm. mine, refinery, this, and I own everything start to finish, it doesn't look good I'm selling to myself, then selling to myself, and selling to myself. You follow? Mm -hmm. It causes issues with tax authorities sometimes. They'll say, oh, you're just transferring profits to one country. So I have to keep different entities. I own all the companies and different entities. These include several gold refineries. The refinery in Dubai is held by a friend of mine in trust me. But all my refineries are private. I don't open it to the public. Mm -hmm. I just do my own refining, my own production, my own this thing and stuff like that. It can do, I can do about 150 kilos a day. He suggests using his refineries to launder Mr. Stanley's money directly. You can pay it through the refinery, you know. Can we bring cash to your refinery? Yeah. Well, I'll play with the paperwork. I'll make it look like you gave me gold or something like that. Keeping it on deposit. Then you tell me to sell the gold. And I sell the gold for your cash in your account. You do everything on the computer. Owning a refinery makes the money laundering process less detectable. Yeah, it moves much of the one where everyone, for the most part. Well, See, the best thing with gold is cash. Well, gold is cash. Yeah, it's better than any currency. As long as you're in gold trading, you can move money anyway. The gold leaf mafia seeks control of its own refinery. Simon Redler. Just bought a massive refinery in South Africa. I think you paid 500 million US for it. It's huge, huge yeah. money. Rapper Refinery is purchased by a newly formed company, Rapper Management. The sole director of Rapper Management is Rhys Ababaker Saint. He's also Goldleaf Tobacco's lawyer, but he's not the real owner. Confidential documents seen by the I unit reveal Rapper's owner to be Howie Baker, a director of Orlean in Dubai. The fact that they were able to buy a Rapper is problematic. It's a well-known refiner. Why wasn't there more scrutiny over who buys it? The Gold Leaf Mafia now has full control of its supply chain. Nothing is left to chance. The control of the refiners, the companies that buy the gold, the companies that sell the gold, there is complete control of all aspects of the money laundering scheme and dirty money from South Africa is clean in Dubai. Dubai has set themselves up for being the middle of the gold trade. The key to being a money laundering haven is two things. Number one is you have to have the financial infrastructure, and they had lax laws and no enforcement. And number two is you have to have the ability to create shell or shelf companies to do business in your country. We have a few companies which are shells. Can you open your account here? Yeah. You know, we have influence. Sure. With the funds to open an account in uh, shell companies. 
He says his businesses control the supply chain for bringing gold into Dubai, and it all appears legal. It's got the buying source, it has got the, the, the import, yeah. it has got Dubai documents, it has custom document, it has yeah. got the, the exchange, you know, receipts of the money. Yeah. That, uh, and uh, it, 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 it has got a source here, for the visa volume, golden luxury. Patney wants Stanley's money laundering operation to become integrated with his network of companies. The ongoing, it's like thousands of cars are there. Yeah. You put you, your cars inside, to travel in. Many of Patney's enterprises are managed by his holding company, Sun Multinational. This is Multinational. Sun Multinational. We run between seven countries. What? All Kenya, yeah, he controls all the countries. Yeah. They want yeah. Kenya? Kenya, yeah. everything. Yeah. Kyrgyzstan, yeah. everything. Yeah. Thank you. After you. Oh, we have 5,380 employees in 12 countries and 35 offices all over. The briefly told we run about eight hotels in Kenya and South Africa. Patney takes the undercover team to another tower named after a precious commodity. On the seventh floor, Rumir Diamonds. Rumir. Rumir. So here are the diamonds there. What are you These are up. Now this from the ground. The diamond mine. Rough. Then they cut and polish. Twenty-two floors up, another of his companies. It's called Brilliant. So these are the cut and polish. So look, these are the best with certificate. Undercover reporters are taken downtown to Sunstar Travel. The laundered money can make good returns from tourism in Dubai. <laughs> we visa for we... Dubai for some star. You have a credit line, everything here. Yes, yes. They, they have the list of all the activities in Dubai and the UAE. You know, zip lining, desert safari, this, this. Patney has many ways to invest Mr. Stanley's money. We have so many yes, options. Uh, Proposals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even a bank is our, our, our investment portfolios. Next, on the 15th floor, another Patney company. The securities trading firm is registered in a Caribbean tax haven. We have an online trading platform. We will onboard clients who want yeah. to trade using our platform technology. We also advise clients on investments and we have their, their funds. Samir Jazini is a securities trader. He advises Africa's super rich on how to manage their wealth. His nickname, Africa's Man of Steel. So I decided to stay in Africa and where there's blood. You know, there's potential. We build trust, we build offshore account. We have yeah. an in house research team of five yeah. who work internationally, work globally. Uh, we onboard our clients also with international banks. We do high net worth individuals, ultra high net worth individuals. Yeah. yeah, so this is where we execute the trades. As you can see, also, I always have my mobile. Uh, uh, Four mobiles here, three in my room. <laughs> well, I was looking, watching the accounts of my uh, clients. The companies Mr. Stanley visited form just one part of Patney's global empire. You don't want it in one place. Our banks are in shells. So all those are our companies, you see? Oh. House and the... Now, you see, it's easy to run all of them. You can't go wrong with the, with the systems in place. What really sets this apart is the level of control that's been exercised to hedge risks. The best way to hedge risks is you control everything, but you also spread your risk out 
in multiple locations so that it becomes harder to track your assets, harder to track your ownership. And they've really developed a sophisticated scheme. I've given you a very broad picture. You are not stuck in one yeah. place. In you West, can make your structure yeah. like a precious bullion. Whoever you have to put your shareholders there, your operator, then it becomes a legitimate operation. That is the laundromat. It's finished washing. It's finished. Like now, then you can invest in uh, what you want. The undercover team receives bad news. There's no investors going to number one as we speak right now. Oh, that changed yesterday? Yes, because the information that came from the security, the chief security of number one, was that number one is only meeting other number ones from around the world. The proposed meeting with Zimbabwe's president is not happening. The schedule is not open yeah. for investors. Okay. That was the information that came through the line right. before I called you. Okay. And that information came through the chief advisor. So basically, number one is coming in on 1st first, first of November. He's doing all of this crime at what what, and he's out on the 3rd. Right. Bum, bum, bum. Gone. Like that. But suddenly, Doolan suggests the president's schedule could change. This, what we're talking about right now, is a facilitation to open up that meeting. We're going to execute, we're going to facilitate all of these things taking place. We're going to do that because he shouldn't be getting his hands dirty in executing things. But presenting these ideas to him, is, is still a good thing. He'll say, oh, that's a good idea. Yes, this, this, this. Now, back to the main thing that we've not yet addressed. Yes. This thing of appreciation, this thing yeah. of facilitation, whatever you want we, to call we, it, we, what are we doing? Yeah.
in the final episode of Gold Mafia, a new Mr. Gold. Because Macmillan doesn't control nothing. Okay. Yeah. This okay. was his worker, cleaning his car. Yeah. He is the number one now he is number in one. Zimbabwe. He's the right there, he's in, he's in his house sleeping on five million. Dollars, <laughs> yeah. And Mo Dollars meets new clients. This is someone that's really wanted by the FBI, designated as a terrorist, and wanted around the world. Hello, Abusia for but Sunburst medicated powder. Now, hold your form. Hey, I say, when I'm in swans, one year's still, never good enough to talk about poor Ama Watson. Oh, don't you mean it's what's now Ama Why I say a crow. It's like a career, a yum, a crow, a juniper, the abosso, and no ye sunburst medicated ointment. A bab wow, my possum, my possum, you know, me not to me. Who win? Pedro Bia, Onya, Mance, Naho Mahonam, Yao, and who win the Marcy? What post, what post to complain in a head so bitch? What was the best hair bar bar? You're from a mama sun best. Sun best products, a duty. We'll be your sun best products. Our pharmacies, any hair bar shops, man. At the phone friend 0551 907 393. FDA, I did get the encrypt to your tomb.